Hello and welcome to the 17th IGT Team F tutorial and today we are doing one thing. Yes, it's Algebra 2. We are going to be starting with algebraic fractions and dealing with a lot of simplification and common factors and stuff. Basically, simplifying uh, algebraic fractions. So at first we need to know how to simplify fractions, and this is basically like equivalent fractions, I'm sure you've done it before. For example, you might have done it like this. 32 over 56, you find the common factor, it's 8, 8 times 4 over, over 8 times 7, 7, cross out this 8, and you will just get 4 over 7. You can do a very similar thing with, with um, our algebra. For example, in this one, we've got 3x, and you, apparently it's best to write your x like this when you're dealing with this, not this. So you've got 3x over 5x squared. So you can rewrite this out like this. Um, I think my pen's a bit too big for this. Uh, yeah, I think it's smaller. My pen's a bit too big for algebra. It's still in um, geometry mode. It's just three times three times x all over five times x times x, and we can just cancel the x's out. So we just end up with uh, 3 over 5x. I just think a little bit bigger, bit bigger. And you can end off with really, really complicated ones, which often involve factorizing, like this one. x squared. I'll do a different color. Don't want to seem boring. So this one is x squared plus x plus 6 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, the first thing that should jump to your head when you see this is these are both quadratics and they can both be factorized. You really got to get into your head that you, whenever you see something in the form like that, you need to factorize it because you're not going to get anywhere without it. And yes, this factorizes down into x plus 2. x plus 3. So x minus 2. It's a minus sign. Oh, and then we got... x plus 3 and then x minus 1 okay and we can just cross out the x3s and we get an answer of x minus 2 over x minus 1 now you have to be very careful in doing things like this because you can't do things that are added. For example, you can't do um, you can't do this. You can't do sixteen over sixty-four and say, "Aha, two sixes and cross them out." And the answer is one over four. Okay, this was not a good example because one over four is the answer. This is what we call uh we're gonna call this is what we call a mathematical fallacy. I spelled that wrong. It looks. It, you can't. Okay. How about this one? 162 over 680 to 32. You can't just cross out the 2s and the 2s and give it an answer of 1 over 1 over 3. That would be totally illogical. So just need to be careful. And you can only do things that are multiplied. For example, I can factorize it if it was like this. Um, x is 3, x plus 9, and so I'm going to back out again. 
x plus 3 minus 92. You can't just do this. No. They have to be multiplied together. Good. You also sometimes have to do addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. And basically, you just need to be able to find the LCM of um, the LCM. The LCM of algebraic numbers. Okay, and that's basically done like this. For example, the LCM of uh, 9 and 12 can be done. 9 and 12 can be done like this. Factors of 9 is 3 and 3. Factors of 12 are 3 and f 2 and 2. Yep, this is a factor tree. And we, we know it's 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. We can also do a very similar thing. It's, it's actually sometimes easier. For example, LCM of x, y is just x times y. x, y. It's just really easy. Even though things like this, LCM, uh, 2x squared, uh, 9y, it just becomes 18x squared y. Really, really easy. And then you can uh, just some solve on some fractions. Now, I'm not really going to cover changing the subject because um, there should be an algebra 1. But I will cover types of variation. And I just skip the page here. Okay. There are two types of variation. The variation comes in two flavors. Direct. And direct and inverse. Basically, in direct, in direct variation, um, we can just say, is equal to ky ky or x and we've got this funny symbol here that's some I can never draw but it's something like an infinity sign x y I don't really like that symbol oh, but for I don't know what color it's gonna Basically, I'm just going to stick to the kx form because I think it's nicer. Equals ky. But for inverse, it's x equals ky2. But we just slap a 1 over ky. It can also be represented like this. Ky to the power of negative 1. Same thing. And you need to be able to solve problems with direct and inverse variation. So I'm just going to um, do a problem in the directive box. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so um, let's say a... Okay, let's do example two. The value of a dime is proportional, directly proportional to the square of its mass, m. If a dime weighs 10 grams, it's worth 200, find the value of a dime of a mass is 30 grams, and the mass of a dime worth 5,000 grams. Okay, we're just going to find the formula for this, really. So we know that the value, that v, is going to be equal to k m, m squared. V equals K M squared. V equals K 
m squared, and we know that um, v equals uh, v equals two hundred. M is equal to ten. Ten squared. So that tells us that um. Then that tells us that k equals two. Okay, and then we can find formula which is just v equals two m squared. Easy peasy. And inverse variation. Well, it's not really much harder. I just need to change my color. Okay, where is an inverse variation question? Okay, B is inversely as E. If B equals six and E equals two, find find the formula. So if B equals six and V equals two, E equals two equals 1 over k kb kb just b b varies inversely as e so we can then tell us that e k b okay so we know that b we know that 2 is equal to 1 over k times times 6. We can multiply the other split on the other side to get 2k times 6 equals 1, which then tells us the fact that the That is it then tells us that that one over two equals six k. K must be equal to uh one half divided by six. I should know the spell already. Okay, so equals one over two. So we can just put that in this formula up here. So we know that E equals 1 over 1 over 12b and we can just substitute this stuff back in 1 1 over 1 over 12 times b and since we know that b is 6 yeah, b is e is 2 and that's really all there is for um variation And before we'll go, we'll just do the laws of indices. There are three laws of indices. One. Let's go. Divide the screen equally. Um, that'll do. One, two, two, and three. The first law of indices is that a to the power of n times a to the power of m is just equal to a to the power of n plus m. Very easy. Okay, maybe I should have done it like this. Hmm. Yes, yeah, much better. One. One. Two, three. Okay, so first law of indices is that a to the power of n time times a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m plus n. Very similar thing for dividing. a to the power of n divided by a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n minus m. And then when you have a power to the power, a to the power of n to the power of m is just equal to the a to the power of n times m. And those are the laws of indices. And, um, yep. 
I guess that's um, I guess what we're doing this time. So um, next time we'll be doing uh linear programming, and um, we'll see you there. So um, and yes, we I'll show you what we'll be using for linear program. Yes, we will be using graph paper. I will. I guess I'll see you um then. If you've got any questions, um, just leave them in the comment section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I um, guess I'll see you um next time. So this is um, I'm, 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 I'm signing off. See ya.